Hi, my name is Randall Loy, and you have found me on the Infertility Channel. Of all the places you could be surfing right now, you're watching me, and I thank you for that. I want to start with perhaps one of the most fantastic stories that I've ever told. Now, some of you have challenged me and said, come on, those stories are real? In fact, they are all real and verifiable. But this story happened after a laparoscopy that I performed about a year and a half ago. This lovely young couple, very hip and even hip hop, came in two weeks after laparoscopy and the patient had pronounced black eyes. I thought she'd been in a fight. Of course, we're always supposed to ask about any suspected abuse, so I said, well, tell me what happened. Were you in a fight? And she started laughing and she looked over her husband and she goes, are you going to tell him or you want me to tell him? And I became a little bit more suspicious at that point. And he said, I'm not going to tell him. And so she proceeded to tell me that about 10 days prior, they decided to have intercourse. One o'clock in the morning, the headboard was hitting the wall and time after time, and they had this flower pot on a shelf above the bed, a heavy flower pot. You know where this is going. Gravity took over. This thing fell off the shelf cold conked her on the forehead. She has a gash on the forehead. She's completely out. Now her husband didn't know if she was still alive or not. And so what he did is he got, he got dressed. He got some sweatpants and a sweatshirt on her and, and put her over his shoulder. And this very vigilant neighbor saw out of his kitchen window what he thought was a murder. Because there's blood coming from her head. She's like a dead person over his shoulder. He gets her in the back seat of his car and takes off. Well, the neighbor calls the cops. And just before this couple went to the South Orlando emergency department, he's pulled over by the cop. And the cop looks back there and sure enough, he sees what appears to be a corpse in the back seat. And he puts, starts putting handcuffs on and the guy says, no, 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 I don't think she's dead. I don't think she's dead. Yeah, come on, buddy. So he arrested the guy and put the wife and him in the cruiser and drove them both to the emergency department where, of course, the woman had a flesh wound after a negative CT scan, she would just watch for observation over the night. They went back home and that's how she got the two shiners. Now, that's not the kind of post-operative course I typically like to see. So we're going to talk today about the intraoperative course and hopefully the post-op course you won't have. Now we have talked about endometriosis at least a couple of times over the last number of weeks and I want you to realize once again that endometriosis is a very common problem in reproductive medicine. About 5% of patients have endometriosis and in a clinic such as ours up to 40% of the patients have endometriosis to one degree or another. Now of those 40%, about 1 in 5 to even 1 in 3 will have a so-called endometrioma which is a deep chocolate cyst as depicted here. Now that I look at these two drawings, you can see why I have a day job. In fact, I almost want to, it looks like a, a kind of a depressed longhorn steer here. And almost if I drew a couple of eyes and a, a snout, you could, you get the idea. Anyway, uh, going back to the chocolate cyst. So here, this is a uterus and a, a chocolate cyst. And when we get into surgery, of course, we don't have it shown for us like this, but We'll make a little incision like that and we open this cavity up and there is a so-called pseudo capsule. It's kind of like taking a water balloon out of another balloon and we have this chocolatey capsule, if you will, that comes out of that incision site in the ovary. Over the last couple of years, it's been a little bit like a pendulum in our field where the thinking has changed from take out all endometriomas prior to IVF now maybe very few if any endometriomas need to be removed prior to IVF unless unless the patient is having pain so if pain is the primary problem certainly by all means take care of these spots of endometriosis cut the scar tissue take out the endometrioma but if one is only interested in infertility and specifically IVF then that endometrioma removal might damage the ovary it might diminish ovarian reserve in a nice study out of Turkey last year, 60 patients were looked at and it was realized that patients who first of all had endometriomas had diminished ovarian reserve and if you take out an endometrioma there is a diminished reserve that lasts for at least six months. Now the study was cut off at six months 
but the authors question what happens beyond that time. Are we permanently damaging the ovary? Are we permanently affecting the blood supply of that ovary by removing these chocolate cysts? So again, the thinking has changed and now unless there's pain, we're leaving those in place. Especially women who have diminished ovarian reserve already should be cautioned about the possibilities of taking out an endometrioma that could further diminish their ability to become pregnant. So once again, the take home message is if infertility is the primary problem, leave the endometriomas. If pain is the primary problem, then consider removing the endometriomas as the other endometriosis is being dealt with. That's it for today. Thanks so much for joining me. I really appreciate your being here. Hope to see you back next week. Be sure to share this video with your friends and subscribe to catch all new episodes each week here on the Infertility Channel. Plus, follow us on Facebook and Twitter. I love hearing from you. Comment below or tell me what you want to see on future episodes by sending me an email to comments at infertilitychannel.org. Until next week.